Hello, it's Sarah. I'm back, guys. I'm going to paint today. I'm going to be working on this Plum Purdy pattern. It's called Be Welcome Gnome, and I already started it. I don't know. I guess when I was painting before, I had all the Christmas ornaments and stuff like that. I had this pattern, and I just started it. I don't think I filmed, but... Um, if you go back into my um, videos, you will find plenty of painting um, tutorials that can help you get started. But let's go through what you're going to need to paint with me today. Um, doing a pattern packet. So this is available on her website. Um, it's called plumpurdy.com. And I've painted lots of her patterns. They're, they're super... Um, I want to call their whimsical. I happen to like her artwork, and so I'm very attracted. She uses bright colors and things like that. When you get a pattern packet, it comes in a little, you know, and you get it, and you get a picture. In this case, we have two pictures because she actually did a version. This is the one we're painting, the little gnome, um, but this is like a be welcome sign as well and the instructions for both are in here. I also ordered the wood at plumpurdy.com. This little wooden piece. So this is what it is. It's like a laser cut wooden blank and then I just traced on the pattern and base coated. So you get pictures and then inside you get your pattern. So this is the actually the um, be welcome sign. It's much bigger. You can put it on a stake out in your yard, and on the back, you get your supplies that you're going to need. So, she uses Demi um, Deco Art Americana colors. I happen to have quite a lot of those. Um, and if you don't have a color, I basically just go because I have tons of paint, so I don't go out and buy the paint anymore. In the beginning, I used to literally take this list with me to the store and go try to find the paint. Um, sure you can order from their website. She probably has her on her website um, But I definitely I convert a lot too because I have a lot of Delta like this kind of paint Delta Ceram coat She uses Americana But there's they're so close and the colors aren't we're bo we're bottle babies So it's not like we're mixing our own color. They come in a bottle. They're already mixed and ready to go and if you have a color that's similar enough to the one she uses that's what I go with but I also went to um, the deco art let's see the Americana website and I just put or, well I put in Americana and the color I didn't have brilliant purple and then it comes up with and I put images and then the color comes up the bottle and then I'll just compare like I didn't I didn't have the purples that she uses at all but the purples I have are just as pretty they're fine you know so don't worry about it um, I did that with a couple different purples but see here's the royal purple swatch so I'll probably use diopsazine this is diop diopsa here here's what it says dioxazine purple and then I didn't have the cranberry I think the cranberry it's called Burgundy Wine, but I have one called, uh, I can't find it. Oh, come on, guys. Come on, guys. Here it is. So this is called Burgundy Wine, and I had Cranberry Wine, and it's very similar. This, this one seems like it's a little lighter. This one might be darker, but it's going to be fine. And then I, this watermelon color is super pretty. This is called um, Watermelon Slice. And I think I'm just going to use um, my fuchsia, my royal fuchsia. I'm, I'm guessing this is to shade the flowers or something. So it's not like major, maybe even the shirt. But it's like a reddish pink. And so this was the closest that I had. I mean, not to say that I wouldn't love to have that color in my stash. Um, Wild Orchid. I think I ended up going with Pansy Lavender, or maybe just straight lavender. Lavender looks good. I don't remember, and that was the thing too. 
at the time when I when I pre when I base coated this I didn't write down like what I substituted for so now and then I pulled all the paints back out and now I'm like guessing so it's what I generally do is cross out and put in what I'm using you know but I've changed a lot since I used to paint um, I don't get caught up in it anymore I just kind of go with whatever I have and um, it's going to turn out just fine so you'll also get your pattern now this is her line drawing Renee Mullins her name is she drew this out and I always will trace do a tracing of it so you have your um, tracing paper you just lay it on top trace the design um I yeah put all your details and everything on here and then when you go to the piece so you would take this and lay it on top I I wing a lot of stuff too guys I don't treat like I could probably just paint that little bumblebee on there without tracing it but I do like to put the tracing on especially if I'm gonna do a tutorial I like to show you guys like see I haven't traced on the leaves and the um, stem because I can wing that pretty easily like I don't need the lines like actually I did do it here because maybe I liked the angle or something of it on here so you want to trace it and use carbon paper which I don't have out carbon or what is it called graphite paper this is this happens to be white this is what I just pulled out real quick but you would stick that under here, take your stylus, little ball tool, you can use a pencil or pen, and then when you have the graphite under there, it comes out onto your piece. So go back in my um, videos and you will find me doing that exact thing. And I'll, I may have to do it, I doubt I'll have to do any of that because I'm already base coated. So when I say base coat, I mean I put down a base coat of the uh, the f underneath color so this is what he's going to end up looking like well not this is the um let's see where's my other picture there's two pictures here it is nope oh my gosh it's around here anyway the other picture because it just because you can tell this hat is green and this hat's purple and you know what make your hat whatever color you want to make your hat it doesn't have to be her color. oh here it is Jeez. it's right there in the package but see so you get a picture and you can just match up whatever you want to do so I already base coated so underneath the beard she paints it gray so that when we put the white on it makes it pop um, it's basically the color of the hat before I add any highlighting and shading all right so the skin tones his little stockings because we're gonna shade and highlight everything to get it to look more dimensional he's holding a little bouquet of flowers here little buds um, but I did trace those on. I also have, and in the, on here, she'll have, let's see. Um, she didn't list it. Um, the type of brushes that she uses and the brand. So if you wanted to order them, you could. Um, and let's see, her copyright stuff. But no, in the directions, she'll, she puts down, if you can notice, I'm going to show, I'm going to zoom in real quick on this little, the dress. You can tell there's little checker pattern a little checkerboard pattern there and she actually uses this it's called um, this is what my husband had it we had this in the garage um, it is called board seam tape and it's for um, spackling on drywall but it's an adhesive tape so you can and I'm just gonna stencil through it and it has a little checkerboard pattern and if you don't have that he doesn't need to have it but I love all those little details and guess what guys it was in my garage <laughs> so go through your stash and uh, wing it and just paint okay this was my serenity for years I've loved to paint so let's get started um, just set this aside set it near you so you have it as a reference 
I also have my little tracing as a reference. I'm just going to set it off to the side. And then you get your directions. And the first part of these directions are, oh, she goes right into your preparation, how you're going to sand and smooth the piece. Um, and then we're going to begin painting. And this is the be welcome sign direction. So I'm just going to turn over and go to the memo clip or tabletop. So um, some of them are the same. So we'll be bouncing back and forth. But for right now, let's go ahead and finish this hat. So it says, base the hat with wild orchid, which I used my purple. Highlight the hat with titanium white and shade with brilliant purple. And then it says, deepen the shading with royal purple. I'm gonna use what I have. So let's see, we're gonna highlight, I have white. Now, this technique is called floating, and I love to float. It can be frustrating for those of you who are new to this type of painting. So I'm gonna give a little tutorial here on how I do it. And you don't need much paint. See how old my paints are, they fall apart. They're still good. Um, oh, Q-tips are always good to have, especially for, for newbies who, you know, listen, don't, if you don't have fun, don't do it. But I love it, so I'm going to do it. You need your water bucket. This is disgusting, but that's my water bucket. Palette paper. This is called a paper palette, and it's kind of like uh, wax paper in a way, a little more uh, thick. And I also used to float on one of those... Um, what are they called? The protective mats, like the um, the Tim Holtz mat that you use. It's like it's got a little bit of a waxy surface to it. But this is just where I'm gonna load my brush. I have these are shop towels. They just actually they hold up a little bit more. And since paper towels are like hard to find for now, I have these, and I'm just gonna use these to paint with. Um, you're gonna need an angle brush. And I'm going to use, I'm going to try, first of all, and I'll always end up going back to my uh, favorite one, which I don't, here it is. Okay, so an angle brush is just that. It's a brush that has an angle to it. I like to use this for floating, but you can use a flat if you have a flat brush. Let me pull a flat out of here. I have lots of angle brushes. And every brand has a different shape, a different feel to it. So you're just going to have to see what works for you. I have, okay, so a flat brush, you can do the same thing. And I use flats, flat brushes for base coating. That's my preference when I'm base coating, because, and this is so beat up. Um, but you load this, and then you can get, in all the nooks and crannies and up against the edges. I like to use a flat, actually Renee prefers uh, a filbert. A filbert is this brush. It has cut off corners, so it's kind of rounded. But it's, it's personal preference, you guys, and you can get the same result with many different brushes. Um, so for right now, I'm gonna stick with, no I'm not, I'm gonna go with one of these smaller ones because I'm a heavy hand, I haven't painted in a while and I'm two, two cups of coffee in. This is by Princeton. I think it was an AC Moore brush, and it's super cheap, like one of the cheaper versions. Papillion is the Artist Club brand, which they've closed down now. They were on an online store. So um, you can get angle brushes at Michael's, and I don't know what brands they have. It's I generally like a synthetic bristle. Um, and the other one that I was going to use is this. This is called Faux Squirrel. And this was recommended by um, Tracy Morrow or Moreau. Moreau. She's, um, I think she loves the Dynasty brand as well. This is the Dynasty brand, and you can order these on her website and from the um, company. Actually, I'm going to work with this one. Why not? The thing I like about a brush when I'm going to float is that it holds enough water so that I don't have to keep reloading. And it also has a nice chiseled edge on it, okay? You're not gonna be able to see the white on my palette as well. So I'm gonna put a little bit of this pansy lavender out, just actually, let me use the diox because 
Um, and you always want to shake up your paint because it does settle and, and you need to mix up all that good stuff. Um, thinking I'm going to shade with this color. Okay, so I'm going to go into my water blot. So I'm going to just let the paper towel suck the water out of the brush. Corner load, so I'm just going to stick that pointy end in a little bit of paint. I don't need a ton. And then I'm going to push down on my palette paper. The paint looks like it's a little bit um, not shooken up, but see? I'm getting a graduation of color from really dark to medium to light to water. You never really want any paint on this end of the brush, okay? So when you're shading, and I walk back and forth, this is how I load my brush, and you can go this way too, back and forth. And when you like what's happening on your palette paper, then you go to your piece and you should get a pretty good result. The other thing about the brush, you don't want it to start to split. If the hairs start to split apart, the my, my, um, what would I say? <laughs> I, I lost for words for um, just, my, I would deduce, I don't know. That tells me that the brush has not enough water in it because if, there, if there's enough water in it, it would kind of be, it would stay, hold together. So I'm going to add a little more paint. And it, it should start to split because, although, it's probably why Tracy loves this brush, it, it seems to be holding enough water and it's staying. So we're good. I'm excited. Okay. So this brush is loaded and ready to go. Um, I'm going to look at my picture and just kind of deduce where I want to shade. So I'm going to go under here. So right under his little hat, I'm going to actually um, take this off real quick. I'm just grabbing, my brush might dry out before I get to, but I'm going to take this tracing line off because I don't like the shape of it. I want to, I'm going to follow the shape that she put down. I'm just taking these off. And this is a regular eraser, and this is um, erasing. That may even have been a chalk pencil, but let me see. I want to put this like this. I need more water probably. No, we're getting it. Hers was like nice and like, um, and then I get a Q-tip because I just want to get it off the beard. Hers, see if you look at her picture. It looks so cute. It looks more floppy. But anyway, this color purple may not be dark enough. Maybe I should use a uh, black plum. Might now. It's way too dark, but I could try it. I could try it. Uh, it's not as purpley. But I think it could look pretty. And then I'll darken it with this. That's what I'll do. I'll go around first and I'll just shade with that real quick. So I rinsed my brush, blot, corner load. I have way too much. Now you can, if you look at that, there's a lot of um, water bubbles over here. I can tell it's just too wet. So I'm going to blot and go right back to where I was. I like it. And let's see where else. So she makes a little wrinkle in his hat, like right here. Like that. I also have a mop brush. And when you mop, think water when you mop. So you just want to pull at the water's edge. Don't touch the dark side, just the water, and you mop up the water. Oh. So I'm going to go down the top of the hat here. It's a little wet still. I'm still zoomed in. Oh boy. See, I can't forget that I'm zoomed in. So I'm going to go like this. And I'm going right over the um, petal because I will, and there's a hair. I can tell there's a little hair there. 
but I'm gonna I'll just go over the petals because I'm gonna go over them again they're a little light where else there's another little wrinkle over here and I'm not sure if I should have highlighted first or not if that makes a difference I'm sure it'll turn out just fine either way if you highlight or shade now I might have gotten a little paint on that end I'm just I don't know if I'm still zoomed yeah you can't really see my brush all right so I'm gonna make another little wrinkle right here I'm in the shot. Oh, gosh. I'm gonna move my camera a little more forward in a minute because um, I get so caught up in what I'm doing I don't look up and see where I'm at in the shot and um, you'll I'll be out of the shot and I don't want to do that because why am I filming if I'm going to be out of the shot oh I should have done right here I just keep going right back to where I was to pick up some paint but this gets shaded and I'm a pity pat kind of pusher I don't do it in one but see how it's splitting because I, I don't have enough water on my brush I can still get the job done but if you're starting to have an issue those things matter like you'll have to be able to deduce that's what I'm trying to figure out I think I'm gonna put a little shading around his nose so I'm gonna go back into my water blot on my paper towel and reload the brush because you kind of have to do that you can't just keep going with the same load I think I'm gonna go around his nose sometimes there's water on the ferrule and I just wipe it off so it doesn't drip down and uh, floating is a delicate technique it, it definitely um, once you put it down you have to leave it alone and let it dry acrylics dry super fast so it's not an issue all right so it looks a little bit shaded but I think I don't think that purple was dark enough so when I go back in with the black plum it's really gonna pop but before I do that I am going to highlight with the white and then we'll come in and tweak it a little bit with the um, the darker purple same thing I just went into water blot corner load and just get some of that blended into the bristles floating across that's why it's called a float because the white floats from this corner down into the water so you get a graduation of color and that's how you achieve this um, highlighted technique now this is going to look super bright because I am a heavy hand so we'll say I might have to tweak it and change now if there's not enough water well I might have just okay so I can pull it see how I'm just at the water's edge and I'm pulling away I mean it looks super bright I don't know if I like it then I can see I even touched it with my finger so this time I'm really going to try and be gentle and in a lot of ways I will go to a smaller brush because it's just safer for me because I when I have too much paint and water on the brush it just I just can't control myself so I'm gonna move to this this is a half inch I believe yeah a half inch I'm gonna move to a 3 8 inch and all that does is it just holds less water and less paint for me um, I get the same result but I I kinda am not gonna be as um, it won't last as long alright so I'm gonna start here this time I always put all the bristles down on the surface not just the tip because you want the water as well and it's very bright listen I'm a dark heavy-handed painter I'm gonna do a little bit that's really all she has oh maybe a little bit down this side of the hat and probably um, I could do it along this rim she doesn't have it 
but like on the opposite side of the shading, like right here. Why not? You can do what you think is best, you know? Now I've kind of connected those two. That's probably why she didn't do it, because it just looks super <coughs> highlighty there. <coughs> but we're going to put flat. I think it looks cute. It looks like it's floppy. It's good. Um, so I'm going to go back in now with that darker purple and go right over the same spots that I already um, shaded and see if it, like, makes it better. This is called um, Black Plum, I believe. Yes. And in this case, I don't think it's the depth of color. I think it's the tones. That's why she chose a different color, so I'm not sure this would look right. But it has to do with the tone of the purple, like the, the hue itself, not the depth. But I have a feeling it's going to be just fine. That's fine. I'm, I'm not mad at that. And then I'm going to go here. Just try to repeat right what I did. And here, see how I, I use a much smaller brush and I stay out of trouble. And a little bit down right here. Hopefully I'm in the shot because I haven't moved my camera yet. And this way I'm going to, but notice that all the bristles have to be on the surface because you need the water of the brush too. So I, yep, yeah, and it's starting to split, but I haven't reloaded. I haven't gone into my water since I loaded this. And then I'm going to just go down that side. And I think um, I could go around the nose. So I'm going water, blot, corner load, work it into the bristles. I'll put a little bit up here. I'll wipe it off the... Um, But we're, I'm going to go over the um, petals again anyway and brighten them up. And then just around the top of the nose, I'm going to go water, blot, corner load. I'm going to get my, um, okay, and I am, I'm just going to take this and go around the nose. And there's probably a reason that she didn't, doesn't look like she did it because she has her own preferences, right? It's her design and I am very appreciative because I don't think to design this type of stuff and how she paints it is how she paints it and how I paint it is how I paint it right I think I want to go a little bit darker right here all right it definitely looks shaded I'm sorry you didn't see me do that part but I'm gonna leave it I think it's good I'm, yeah, I think it's good. Um, now what? So I'm going to go back to my... Then she's, so that's all we're doing there for now. Um, because I think the flowers are a separate... Um, but maybe I'll finish that. Let's go, let's see where it is. See? Flowers, vines, stems, and leaves are um, a separate. So I'm going to move my camera forward a little bit. Hold on. I'm just grabbing my tripod and moving. Okay, that's better. It's a little closer to me. Um, so let's go. Here, base the stems held in the left hand of the avocado with, with avocado. Okay, so we're not doing those yet. Base the leaves, let's see, base the flowers in the left hand. Base the petals with titanium white, and then shade the ends of the petals that connect to the center with a light wash of watermelon slice. I'm just gonna follow the directions, I think. I think I'm gonna go just continue down with the jumper, she calls it. So we're gonna hide and shade light, hide and shade light. Shade and highlight. Um, base the sleeve with bubblegum pink. I did that. Highlight the outer edge with titanium white. So let's go ahead and do that. I don't think I want these lines on here either. Before you paint anything, take off any tracing lines that you don't want because um, 
Alright. And I have the titanium white out, so that's why I'm going right to this. And it says the outside. I could probably use my bigger brush because I'll get a wider flute if I do it. I think that looks... Eh. I think I'm going to use um, my bigger brush. So I just took that off and I'm just going to go back to the rigger. Because a bigger brush... Oh, I put it right in the... Um, Um, a bigger brush just helps me get a, a wider flute. That's why I need to go small because all my flutes would be wide, which looks good, but whatever. Okay. So I'm starting down here. And I'm going to pull it up the outer edge. That looks highlighted. And then, I just want to take it off here. I see it on here. If it hasn't been sitting for too long, you can take the paint off. Acrylics are great. So I highlighted that. Then it says shade with watermelon slice. And what did I say I'm going to use? Just the um, Royal Fuchsia. But I want to let that dry a little bit. But I'm going to put this out. Um, deepen the shade in with burgundy wine. So I'm just putting my paints away because my desk starts to really get burgundy wine. I have cranberry wine. So instead of doing two times, you could just do one, but I'm going to do two and show you the difference. Um, what else? paint a thin stripe da, 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 da. Um, base the body of the jumper so the green part with celery green paint the belt at the waist with avocado so right here I need some avocado I'm just waiting for that to um, that white to dry before I go any further on that because you'll pick it up so I'm just gonna base with a flat brush I told you I like to use a flat brush and when I load my brush I just, that's the paint, but I just pull a tiny bit, and I'm actually using paint and water because there's already water on the bristles, and it thins it down just a tiny bit to get it to move nicely, and you'll need probably like two coats at least of avocado or whatever green you have, it will be fine. But see how I use the, the actual um, chisel edge of the brush to go right up against that, that edge of the, of the belt. So this is all, and I like a nice, I'd rather do two thin coats than one gloppy uh, thick coat. So just get it on there. A nice thin coat. I'm going a little closer to the beard. And then let that dry. And we'll come back and put another one on. And it'll start coming together. Um, <clears throat> I can go over to my sleeve now with the... First we're going to do it with the pink. So fuchsia. I didn't go into water, water blot, fuchsia. This seems a little wet. And I put the color up against and it's not really showing up. Now remember this was supposed to be watermelon slice. So it would probably be a little richer. This is just called Royal Fuchsia. And you can see it. It's definitely, you know, making it have um, some depth. 
but I'm gonna go back in with the uh, what am I gonna use the cranberry wine and so we're gonna let that dry while that's drying I guess I'm gonna I could put a second coat on the belt but let's see what else it says here uh, paint the belt with avocado highlight the jumper with a brush mix of titanium white and a little bit of spicy mustard wow I didn't have spicy mustard so I'm gonna have I have antique gold but that definitely seems like a spicy mustard so I'm gonna go put that down and what colors did it say it said titanium white and a little bit of spicy mustard this is going to be um, highlight and again I'm going to get my picture as a reference of where she's highlighting and it looks like it goes down this side and along the bottom so that's where I'm going to highlight so I'm going to load my brush so I have water blot titanium white remove my water bucket and I'm just gonna put that in the brush and then I'm gonna add a little mustard Am I in the shot? Yes. and just make a brush mix it seems maybe a lot yellowy so I'm blotting and I'm gonna go back to the white and just mix it right there on the palette Okay, and then I'm going to go and sh highlight all those areas and see she's got it going right across the, um, the belt. So that's why I should do it in order. So I'm just going to stop right here. And then I guess I should do, oops, my shirt. It's the hazard of, but see in general I would have gone, and this kind of actually could be shaded because it's it's whatever we're good it's a little gnome it's not you know a work of art and see this looks chippy choppy too I don't like that I'm gonna take it off I'm gonna start from this end and I'm actually gonna before I do it I'm gonna put another coat of um, avocado on the belt And then I'll be able to highlight right across it. Maybe I, maybe she wants me to finish the belt first, though. See, I'm I'm very impatient in general, and I like so I skip around a lot when I'm doing a piece. I don't just finish one thing at a time. Um, so let's let's go back to this um, the sleeve. Uh, it said to darken with burgundy wine. Did I already put that out? Um, yes, I did. It's right here. So I'm going to go ahead and darken. I'm going to use my smaller brush. And I'm going to put a little bit of this, which it's actually called cranberry wine. But I think it will do the trick. And I'm going to start at the bottom. Put the color up against the jumper and he's from Europe because if he was an American troll not troll no they wouldn't he wouldn't be calling it a jumper he's a European troll but see that's kind of chippy choppy so I'm just gonna go like that and that looks good makes me happy um, Maybe we can shade, let's see, oh, shade with avocado, all right, I think I'm going to go in with the avocado first since I have it out, and because then we're going <clears> to, <throat> we're going to darken our shading as well, but look at this, look how it makes it look wrinkly and stuff so that's how we're going to shade I'm going to just shade in those little areas first with avocado 
and I'm corner loading always. I, whenever I do this technique, it's the same way. I load the brush the same exact way. So we're going to go up here and make a little, and I'm just going to take my, oh, I think that might be okay. Actually, she had it going all the way up to the beard. I'm just following the picture. And then there's one next to it. And it kind of goes all the way up to the B scap, but not quite. So it kind of stops, but mine could go all the way up. Mine have, there's little hairs in my brush, I guess. I don't, I don't like the way it stopped right here. I think it's lunchtime. I hear them in the kitchen. I'm gonna go eat too. All right, then there's one right here. And I can do that before I go ahead and finish my sleeve and my belt. So right here. I'm just going to take my mop and gently at the water's edge, just touch it. I barely touch it. <clears throat> and that gives you those little wrinkles. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I'm getting a flog. Um, I think my belt is good. So I'm going to finish the highlighting on that side. And let's see, so I'm going back to my directions. Highlight the outer edge. Okay, we did the sleeve. Uh, paint the belt. At the waist with avocado, highlight the jumper with a brush mix of titanium white and spicy mustard. So titanium white and spicy mustard. And I'm gonna go up the side didn't seem like it was wet enough, my brush. I want it to be, you can tell because it won't move. And we're just gonna take this right down this side. Oops, I'm getting crazy. I'm gonna take it off the belt a little bit, but I'm gonna go right up over like that and you can take it off your beard, which it won't really, hmm. I'm just gonna take it off there a little bit. Other than that, I like it. Um, and then we're going to highlight. See, that was a nice load. And I plopped it in the water. We're going to highlight the opposite side. So like here, you'll see. Maybe a little bit along the bottom. But I'm going to go white, yellow, and make that brush mix. And then we're going to go... Uh, here, so the opposite sides of the shading is generally where you're going to highlight. Flip it around. Sorry, I'm panicking looking for my mop. And I overlapped, so I'm, I went over the shading, so I'm just going to take that off. My brush isn't loaded right. I'm not going to use this. I want to use the smaller one, wherever that is. Here it is. And actually, if I was just me painting and not trying to make a video for you guys, it's a lot more relaxing. Like, I'm a little more... I'm taking each one, each things so much more seriously because I'm filming and I don't want to have to repeat but you can do this as many times as it takes don't panic and take it off until you're happy you know and just 
enjoy the process. That's what I really, really want to get across to you guys. Make sure it's just fun. Um, there's a little shading under the B-Skep and actually under, around the whole beard. I'm just going to go in with avocado right now and this is my smaller brush. And I'm going to shade right here. My brush was splitting. And We're going to be putting hairs on that beard eventually, so they'll all stick out and cover some of this. It'll be great. And then a little bit underneath. The, the beard hairs will cover. It'll, they'll peek down, so it'll be good. I don't know if I'm in the shot because I'm just in the zone of painting. Oh, it is. Thankfully it is in the shot. Mm. Good enough. Just going back to my directions. I like the edge of the sleeve. Okay, let's go back to the sleeve. Dot the buttons on the cuffs with burgundy wine. So you can see that here. I did not make a cuff. So let's see. Highlight the edge of the sleeve. Deep in the shade. Yeah, it does see she doesn't it says add some water and paint thin a thin wash of stripes with a burgundy wash. Okay. Okay. Uh, I gotta put a little bit of a highlight float to make this cuff. So right here, I'm adding a little to create a cuff. I don't want it to be too bright. And especially up against, like I probably should have done that before I, um, let's see. And then I'm just going into the um, cranberry wine or whatever it was called, burgundy wine, because I'm going to make this cuff. My brush is splitting, but I think we're good. And it said to make stripes with a, um, I'm going to try and find a little brush, like a flat brush that I can, I'm going to use a liner probably, you know that? I think this rigger is going to be, no, nah, it's too thin. I need it to go a little wider, so like a number three round, because I don't happen to have, um, this is an old brush. This is a Donna Dewberry stroke work brush. But when you use a round brush, you can also flatten it out. So let's see, what color are they? The darker pink. Um, should I use fuchsia? No, I like this. So I'm going to flatten. I'm just going to take a little bit of that and make a wash. Well, first I have to make a wash. So a wash is, say, like 70% water. I don't even know if the percentage is right. But it's mostly water and a little bit of paint. So it's water, like tinted water, basically. That's what a wash is. And then I clean my brush, and now I'm going to go into that with, and I'm going to fully load it. So I fully load this brush with that paint. And I'm just going to eyeball it. I can still see my um, tracings of this. 
of the stripe marks. There we go. Oh, I don't like that one. I'm going to take it off. It's fine. I like it better like that. And then she said to put... Uh, I'll use a um, stylus and cranberry wine and make little buttons right here. Oop, and I slipped. It's annoying when you slip. That looks good enough. And then we're going to put a little white liner line. So I'm going to use, let's see what this is. <coughs> A 10 slash 0 and I'm going to load that with titanium white and water so that it would it'll kind of come off the bristles like ink and then I'm just gonna write and they're not really dry those stripes so just so you know if anything goes wrong you know it isn't probably it's a little too soon but I think we're good um, gently got little stripes there and I think that sleeve is done uh, Got a tiny highlight. Let's see, got a tiny highlight on the buttons. Really? Okay, well, they're not dry yet, but she wants me to put a little tiny highlight on there. Let's go back to uh, shade the jumper with avocado. Deepen the shading with uh, black green. So she wants me to deepen the shading. What about the belt? Did she have me fin? Let's see, place a piece of. Okay. Paint the stripe. Paint the belt with avocado. And she doesn't really have me. Oh, paint the stitching on the belt with titanium white. Okay. So I think the belt is just getting shaded kind of along with the jumper. Like that's pretty much it. So I'm going to go ahead and put the little, since I have my liner brush in my hand, little tiny stitching lines of white here and darken the shading on the jumper with what did she say black green I believe I have it traditional burnt umber up oh, here it is black green now I'm using my smaller brush because I don't, I have a heavy hand, you guys. If I go too big, I get, I load up too much paint and I'm going to go into my black green with the corner, the corner load, gently. Um, I'll start here. pretty much the same thing. It's just a little tad darker. So just be gentle. It's a dark color and it already looks good. So don't get crazy. Um, I like to start from the bottom and I like to start from the top sometimes. It's, it's a personal preference, but I'm definitely going to put this around the beard right here right here. I just really want it to go over the belt again. Even though my white could have been... That looks good. And it's a little chippy choppy, so I'm just going to soften it with my mop brush. But I want to go under the B-step with this too. 
sometimes if once you start to add the darker color it's more noticeable if you didn't put it so you kind of have to go once you start using it you should probably put it everywhere just make sure everything is dry because if once you if it's not dry you can absolutely pick up what you put down I guess I have to go around here too that looks good though don't worry about those edges because we're gonna make um, the beard I th oh then we're gonna use this so let me open my pack I'll be right back <laughs> 